Hey folks, Richard Tubb here with another episode of Tub Talk, the podcast for IT consultants. And I'm excited to be joined today by an old friend of mine, Mark Banfield. Now, Mark is the Chief Revenue Officer of Logic Monitor. Logic Monitor is a SaaS platform providing automated hybrid infrastructure monitoring and analytics. How are you doing, Mark? I'm great, Richard. Thank you very much. And I uh, really appreciate the time. So it's lovely to talk to you again. Uh, my pleasure. And I was I was just reflecting before our call where we first met one another and how long we've known one another, because it's been a little while now, hasn't it? It has. I mean, I first met you right at the beginning, of, at the outset of my journey with Autotask. And I joined Autotask in April 2011. Um, April the 11th, to be precise, 2011. And, uh, and it would have been probably right at the beginning of those first few months. And it was actually a, a friend of both of ours called David Hay, who, works for, who at the time was working for GFI, that became, um, eventually became part of SolarWinds. And, um, and he talked to me about you and said, you need to get to know Richard. And I think I got introduced to you. Might have been at one of the GFI events. I think we ran a GFI event down in London in the Hilton Hotel, um, and Tony Paul was presenting from Synergy IT up in Manchester, and uh, we had various other people presenting. But yeah, we presented, and I think that's how I first got to say it would have been June, getting on for sort of eight eight years ago, really. Yeah. No, it was crazy, and that was just at the start yeah. of your journey with the Autotask, the UK office, which you had right. a massive part in growing into this absolute monster. So for for anybody who uh, sort of who doesn't know you, uh, give us a little bit about your background in the industry and, and what brought you to where you are today with Logic Monitor. Yeah, sure. I mean, I when I was the beginning of my career, uh, I, I did a master's degree in GIS, Geographical Information Systems, and uh, and therefore coming out of doing that, kind of felt that I wanted to go into that industry, and I joined a company called MapInfo, uh, which was a GIS product, and um, had a great sort of um, um, uh, start of my career selling into, particularly into the telecoms market. Uh, but interestingly, at the time, the CEO of Map info was Mark Catini and um, someone that you know very well who, you know, fast forward many years later, um, became the CEO of Autotask at the end of 2010. And through my connection to Mark and some other people within the company, that's how I came into Autotask. So I joined Autotask in 2011, as I said. And at the time, Autotask was a, a you know, as you know, it's a, you know them well, it's a, um, a SaaS-based, um, effectively almost like Salesforce for managed service providers. It allows them to automate all of their tasks and, uh, you know, ticketing, service desk, uh, you know, billing, uh, CRM, et cetera. But the company was really practically entirely US-based. Um, and Mark asked me to come on board and build a, a European business. Um, and I started the office, and I remember saying to him at the time, where should we put the office? I, and I said, well, I live in Richmond, and Richmond is a nice place for an office, so that's where we put the office. And, um, and it still remains the, the head of, the EMEA and the international operations for DATO today, the Richmond office. So I joined in, uh, in, in April 2011, and I must say I, I loved the market. I mean, I, I found it like really invigorating working with managed service providers, and I found that the, the important thing uh, building that business was really learning and understanding the way that MSPs work and learning how to get into that community. It's a very community-driven market. And um, if you can win over um, and help certain managed service providers, they will help you sell to other managed service providers and partner with them. So I'd say that we had a pretty rapid growth. I mean, I remember joined in April 2011, and we moved offices. I think we, we thought success was if we had five people by the end of 2011. And I think we had 35 people by the end of 2011. And, you know, fast forward to the time when, Vista acquired the company in 2014, um, and at the time we were, you know, it were, we were fast growing. But then once Vista came on board, we of course then started growing even more rapidly, and uh, we acquired Central Stage, which is a UK business. Uh, Christian and Ian, um, who I know you've spoken to on your podcast, um, became a key part of our success in terms of starting to expand the product part, portfolio for Autostars, and we started really scaling the business. And um, by the time we merged with Datto in 2018, 
the international operation for Autos was about 50% of all the revenue of the company. Uh, we had operations, we had uh, three offices in the UK, we had an office in Amsterdam, office in Copenhagen, Denmark, office in Munich, Germany, uh, Singapore, and um, Sydney, Australia. And we were selling in every country you can imagine. But yeah, it was a it was a key part of the merger, I believe, between Autos and, and Data. One of the key tenants, there were many key tenants, but one of them was definitely the strength of our MIA business. And, um, and to this day, that still continues to be a really uh, strong growth for the overall Datto portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you built this, you know, you've downplayed it a little bit, if I do say so, Ian, mate. I mean, because <laughs> you grew, I can remember being in the brewery, the offices in uh, London, right. when you started yeah. that, or, that journey. And I came in and as a, an advisor, as a consultant. I think there was about four people in the office. Um, and every right. three, yeah. three months or so, when I'd come back and visit you, it would double and it would double and it would double yeah, until right. you were in, I, I visited the one time and there was about 150 people in the office and I'm like, where do all these people spring from? So, uh, yeah, you know, you've, you, you built yeah. this absolute uh, sort of monster business uh, uh, there, you know, really built a, a fantastic operation. Uh, then the Datto um, uh, uh, sort of acquisition and merger there. And I guess my question for you is, you know, you've achieved all of this success with task. So now... Uh, the boy from London goes across the pond, yeah. <laughs> and I'm speaking to you today <laughs> right. in uh, Austin, Texas. So tell me, tell me what that's that's, right. that lo- that looks like uh, for, for you to sort of be put some forwards between the US and the UK. Yeah, so um, I spent a year within Datto running the international business, and uh, yeah, and I'd spent, at, at that point I I'd, I'd spent a total of eight years really working on all tasks and, and loved every second of it. I mean, it was a it was, in many, many respects, just a huge part of my life experience and um, I loved every minute of it and, and made some ama- amazing connections with people along the way, both customers, partners, as well as people that worked with me. But, you know, like all things in life, it was time to do something new. Um, and this uh, presented an opportunity to me um, around Logic Monitor. Now, I'd actually, I actually knew Logic Monitor. Um, I, you know... Logic monitors will get into work uh, partly in the managed service provider space. And we'd actually partnered with Logic Monitor in the early days of Autotask. And, um, and actually, it was a guy called Steve Kahn, who's still within the company today and runs our channel business. And uh, he moved to London back in, yeah, probably 2013, 2014 to start a London office. Um, and we partnered together and we supported each other. And we had an integration between the Autotask platform and Logic Monitor. So I knew the company. Uh, knew, knew that they were a fantastic technology, fantastic company. Knew the CEO, Kevin McGibbon, who's a fantastic guy and, like a, and, and has been the CEO um, right from the very beginning. He was one of the early founders in the business. So um, it was an obvious choice for me. And, and then as I started, I thought I knew the company. But then when I got into it, I started to really learn the company. Um, and I would say it's the, one of the most exciting spaces in my career that I've ever worked, it's, it's an absolutely phenomenal market that we're in um, at an absolute critical time for enterprises as well as for managed service providers. So part of the, part of the deal with this was that I'd spend um, a vast amount of my time in the US. I moved to Santa Barbara, which is where the headquarters of the company are, um, at the beginning of this, this journey back in September 2018. I spent three months there. Then I came to Austin which is really where most of our growth is happening. That's where a lot of our hiring is happening in Austin. It's really becoming a big sort of center of excellence here. Uh, and we're still hiring in, in Santa Barbara. We're still growing there as well, and in Boston, New York, and in London, and in Sydney. So um, but I've spent a lot of my time here, and I've sort of straddled my time between London and Austin. And uh, Austin's very different to London. I mean, in London right now is that lovely time of year where the seasons change, and it's autumn, and you get the... The leaves are falling and you have the crisp, the crisp evenings and crisp mornings. And here it's like 100% humidity and 100 degrees. And it's like hell for a guy from London that's not used to the heat. But, but apart from that, I love everything about it, you know. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. So Logic Monitor, let's fast forward to the current day then. For, for anybody who doesn't yeah. know Logic Monitor, how do you describe the company? So <clears throat> monitoring is something that's always been important for any organization. Um, what's happened in the last 10 years, as you're very aware of, is that we have gone through what some people might call a fourth industrial revolution, where every aspect of 
process is, is becoming digitized. Every aspect of the customer journey is being digitized. Um, and every company in the world effectively is becoming a software company. Um, and what that means is that the infrastructure that runs these services and these applications that every company in the world is using um, is critical. Right? You cannot have downtime. I often use the, I liken it to like, if you look back in the bank, at banks, I mean, how did you interact with a bank 15 years ago? I know how I did. I used to walk into my branch in Twickenham in West London, and I knew the people in the branch by name, and they knew me, and I would go and take my money out, and I'd pay checks in, and, and that, however else I interacted with the bank. Um, or I'd phone them up, and you, that would be the other way you interact with the bank. So if you think about it, those days are gone. I mean, how do you interact with your bank today? It's internet banking, it's mobile banking. And how important is it to monitor the infrastructure that underpins those applications? We could argue it's about the most important thing a bank has to do, because if you can't log on to your internet banking, you're not going to stay with that bank for long. So, and that, that's probably the easiest way for me to explain what we do. We enable organizations to monitor their infrastructure. And the key thing is here that we can monitor any aspect of their infrastructure. And as, as you know, um, enterprises, and we'll move on to talk about managed service providers, the infrastructure that they have to look after is inherently very hybrid. I mean, as they are innovating and they're becoming more agile and they're starting to go through digital transformation initiatives, they're starting to shift to the cloud. They're starting to embrace cloud trans transformation. They're starting to use AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure to be able to rapidly innovate and rapidly launch new applications. But they're still having to look after a very diverse and very uh, complex um, on-premise environment and covering their networks, to their servers, to their server infrastructure, to their virtualized environments, et cetera, et cetera, storage, et cetera. So we help organizations look after all of that infrastructure. We, we're a SaaS-based platform, which means that we can rapidly uh, monitor any new environment. We allow them to, in the end, the business case is very, very simple. We allow, allow them to provide better monitoring of that environment, which allows them to identify root causes quicker. It allows them to prevent issues quicker, which ultimately in, ensures that their uptime is better than it was before, which means that their customer experience is better, which means that overall the business is healthier. And so I think monitoring has always been important. I don't think it's ever been more important than now. Um, an outage for an organization can be catastrophic. I mean, there's, there's always things in the news about, you know, there's a major airline that we all know very well who had a major outage um, uh, in the last few years. And it, co it didn't only cost them a huge amount of money in terms of what that meant in terms of flight delays, flight cancellations, frustrated customers. But from a PR perspective, it was a disaster. And, um, and we help organizations avoid that. And that's really what we're focused on. Yeah. And, and an MSP in the UK asked me about Logic Monitor the other day because uh, they were trying to differentiate between, uh, you know, the tools that you and I are very familiar with, RMM tools, um, you know, yeah. that uh, MSPs use as their uh, bread and butter today and Logic Monitor. And I was trying to explain to them that Logic Monitor is like, the, net, the evolution almost of monitoring, it's just like anything yeah. can be monitored and it goes so much further than that. It's how you use that data, um, you know, that is monitored, which I, I want to uh, dig a dig it bit further into. But before we get there, okay. you know, give me some practical examples of the things that you see Logic Monitor clients um, uh, actually monitoring because you've got cloud, you've got network, server, website, all sorts of things. Absolutely. I mean, it, there really is no end to what you can monitor with a platform like Logic Monitor. I mean, that's really part of the uniqueness of it is that if anything has any kind of IP connection, we can monitor it and we can collect metrics on that and we can start to identify the health of that, of that service. Um, we have customers in every part of the market you can imagine. We have a major um, fast food outlet in the US that monitors their entire infrastructure that's partly in the cloud and partly on-premise they even monitor the, the fridges that are in the, um, in the stores to ensure that like, those fridges are performing as optimally as they should be. Uh, we have major airlines that use our products to monitor um, all of their infrastructure. You imagine an, air, an airline, how, in, how IT intensive that is in terms of, you know, there's a major airline in the US that's a customer of ours, and they 
to back a plane out on the runway touches 90 different systems. Before, before, you, before your plane goes back on that runway, you've touched 90 systems. You think about like the baggage handling systems, the check-in system, uh, the, the flight control systems. You know, there is a plethora of different systems and services that have to call on infrastructure. And we monitor all of their infrastructure. Much of it is like Unix, traditional on-premise, mainframe environment. Some of it's in cloud. And part of the uniqueness, of course, is we provide them a single pane of glass into looking after all of that. Um, we have major healthcare service provider in uh, that's a global healthcare service provider, and they they literally monitor MRI scanners, um, heart rate machines. You know, they, there's all kinds of things they monitor. And if you think about a hospital, how much of that needs monitoring? You know, I've sort of in one of our corporate videos, I sort of use the term "we save lives," and it's a, sort of a bit of a joke, but we really do. We enable that organisation to maintain and ensure the um, the uptime of, of all of that machinery in major hospitals. So we have, yeah, we have a really unique uh, proposition to the market. And, um, and to your point, I mean, you know, I come from the world of um, RMM, remote monitoring and maintenance, and, and the two are very, very separate and very different, actually very complementary. You know, RMM's very, very focused on desktop monitoring, patch management, you know, an element of server monitoring. If you want to start to go deep into monitoring, Every, if you think about a, an application um, that might, not, might be running, let's call it a web application or mobile application, there's so many aspects of infrastructure that that touches, right from down, deep down into the network. So you really have to be able to monitor the entire network to understand, okay, is the fault that's happening going right down into the network or is it in the server or is it in the application layer? Uh, there's kind of um, there's so much uh, to the stack that these monitoring, and I think that's the uniqueness here is that Logic monitors looking after and maintaining and, and monitoring that entire infrastructure stack. And, and yeah, and I could go on and on. We have an amazing number of examples of unique use cases where people are um, using the platform for really in innovative purposes. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk specifically about managed service providers then. You know, this podcast is yeah. the, main, the main audience, are owners of IT businesses, managed service providers. A growing part of your business, of Logic Monitor's business, is helping managed service providers to serve their customers now. That's right. So tell me, yeah. you know, what are the benefits to MSPs who want to partner with Logic Monitor? What does it look like for them? Sure. Well, so today about uh, almost 45% of our business comes from managed service providers. Um, and where we help MSPs is MSPs that are looking after um, organizations' infrastructure where they've outsourced the monitoring and the maintenance of that infrastructure to the MSP. Um, we're helping those MSPs monitor, proactively monitor and maintain that environment, those environments for their customers. In terms of the uniqueness of why I think is I think logic monitors are a great fit for MSPs. First off, we're a SaaS solution, we're multi-tenanted. From a technology architecture perspective, we're a really good fit for MSPs. Why does SaaS matter? Well, SaaS means that you can do everything quicker. If you think of an MSP, one of the most critical things, and from my time of working with MSPs, is, you know, and it's a sort of real, it's a, it's a small difference, but it's such a unique difference, is that you know, for an enterprise, IT is typically a cost center, right? And it's, and it's normally measured in that way. Whereas for an MSP, you know, you're, they're selling IT as a service. Therefore, their time is so critical. And that if you could minimize the amount of time you need to, to, to have in terms of looking after systems, that's critical. And that's what we help do. So if you look at Melodic Monitor, one of the key things is it's SaaS and it's agentless, which means it's very quick and easy to deploy. So if you imagine an MSP is bringing in a new customer, they can, they can turn on and monitor that customer's environment in a matter of, no joke, in a matter of minutes. I mean, they can deploy the agents, the collectors, and they can start getting metrics on the health of that customer's environment immediately. That becomes really compelling from a, from a sales point of view for an MSP. I mean, they can start to show very quickly the results of, okay, this is what we can see in your environment. Um, it's absolutely critical. Uh, the second thing is, so th the product allows them to monitor quicker, monitor more, and it allows them to provide a better level of monitoring, which for the customer means they can, you know, improve, they can maintain their SLAs. They can also like ensure that there's minimal outages and they can actually provide them a better customer experience. At the back end, it becomes way more efficient to, man to do monitoring because um, one of the challenges with traditional 
on-premise monitoring tools. It's like, and yeah, we, and there's many in this space that we're in. But one of the challenges is if you want to extend that monitoring capability and you want to monitor a new environment, maybe it's a new Tanix environment, or maybe it's a um, a new server environment um, or a new network environment. If you want to do that, you need to go back to the vendor and you need to get a patch and you have to put that patch on the platform in order to start to monitor a new environment. You know, and if it's an agent-based architecture, you'd have to go and deploy those agents on the servers in the customer's environment. And with our with our logic monitor, because it's SaaS, it's easy for them to extend. So we, we have 2,000 different monitors that we provide out of the box. Yeah, free of charge. We don't charge for any, but we have a team of people that are constantly going in and working out environments and building monitoring capabilities to monitor those new environments. So, so out the box, you can pretty much monitor everything you need to. However, there's all these things you, you, you need to extend, and we provide the capability for MSPs to extend the monitoring of what they need to monitor. So they effectively, we have MSPs that have built somewhere in the region of about 5,000 different monitoring packs all different types of environments, all different types of devices. And those are available in a kind of store, almost like an ex we call it the LM exchange, where, you know, if you're searching, okay, I need to monitor some very unique, I know, sonic wall type environment, um, and it's not available in a logic monitor right now, you go into the store and someone somewhere would have developed that. And that creates a little ecosystem for MSPs as well, because MSPs can publish what they do, and we verify that and we validate that. So... I'd say that we 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 have a really good proposition for for MSPs. We allow them to provide a better service to their customers, and we allow them to reduce their cost of ownership in terms of monitoring. Yeah. Now, I bang the drum quite a lot with MSPs about the idea of um, lowering their cost of support. For me, that's what managed services yeah. is all about, you know, serving the customer, lowering your cost of support. Mm -hmm. L Logic Monitor, you know, I hear from MSPs who are using Logic Monitor, talk, they talk about streamlining their troubleshooting, you know, by using it, using yeah. the statistics that, you know, the monitoring data that it produces. Can you give any sort of examples of that, practical examples of some of your customers who have used Logic Monitor in that way? Yeah, there's a, there's a number, really. So a couple of places I'll go with that. I mean, first off, um, we <coughs> automation is key. Um, and automation is king, really, in this game for managed service providers. So the more you can automate, the better. So our platform allows, because we collect so much data, uh, because we have this access to all these APIs through, through our collectors, um, it means we can troubleshoot much quicker. It, it means we can pinpoint the issues MSPs quicker and bring it to the service so they can remedy that and take control quicker. Uh, what it means is that they don't need to spend as much time sifting through data and looking through data to find the information. We kind of like use an AI approach, using anomaly detection and things like that in order to identify the issues quicker so that, that the MSP can spend less time sort of trying to work out what the problems are and fixing them and more time just proactively fixing them and then therefore getting on uh, with more revenue generating activities, and which, which again talks to what you were talking about there, which is about um, reducing their cost of uh, cost to serve. Um, another couple of key things is uh, um, from an integration standpoint. So we integrate um, our platform with, you know, we have hundreds of different integrations to different parts of the technology environment. The key ones for MSPs are three key platforms we integrate with are Autotask, uh, which we talked about earlier, um, ConnectWise, and service now. Um, and practically speaking, I mean, it seems to me that most MSPs are using one of them three platforms to, to manage their business from an ITSM standpoint. Um, and we integrate with them. And, and interestingly, I'll talk about service now because it's just in my mind at the moment because we've been working on a, with an MSP right now on that. But from a service now put standpoint, we monitor and discover everything in an environment. We can collect all that information and we pull all that information to a CMDB, into the ServiceNow CMDB. And what, why that's important is that creates a lot of healthiness and a lot of hygiene in the CMDB. And, and of course, critical to an MSP is, is being able to visualize and see everything that's out there so that they ensure that they're making money on everything that they're looking after. I mean, that's, that was always a surprise to me. It's a very common problem for MSPs. They, they bring in all these new customers. And they don't really have good visibility of what's out there and what, in terms of what they're looking after. And it's missed revenue opportunity. And, um, and I'd say that that's one area we're really helping MSPs is being able to identify everything that's in the network from their customers and be able to put that in the CMDB. And then there's a live 
um, link between the CMDB and Logic Monitor. So if you make a change in the CMDB, it updates in Logic Monitor and vice versa. That makes a lot of sense. Now, you know, we've talked a little bit about helping MSPs um, to troubleshoot. Um, and lots of MSPs that I uh, come across still seem to be fixed in this mindset of reactive. You know, a problem happens, they resolve the problem. I totally get that. That's yeah. how IT has been done for many, many years. The one thing that really interests me about Logic, Logic Monitor is the performance monitoring aspect of it. So, yeah. um, Planning for tomorrow, you know, is a term I've heard you use uh, uh, for this yeah. around it. Explain a little bit more for anybody who's new to performance monitoring. How does that help MSPs to plan for tomorrow for them and their clients? Yeah, so a um, couple of things there. Um, one of the uh, aspects of our platform that's quite unique is, uh, is a part of the product we call Logic Monitor or LM Service Insights. So what we do is we group together and I was sort of touching upon this early, that we group together all of the underlying um, infrastructure that makes up part of a service, um, and then we look at it from a service viewpoint. So effectively, we can, almost like a traffic light system, green, red, identify whether a service is healthy or not healthy. And if, it, if there's a problem, we can then pinpoint with underneath that service, as I said, it could be many, many different parts of the infrastructure that's causing that issue. We can pinpoint that really quickly. Um, that allows MSPs to become really, really um, proactive. It allows them to take control. It allows them to uh, solve um, issues much quicker. Uh, that's one aspect. The other aspect, I think, which is key is because we're monitoring the performance of all these different environments, you know, one, of the, one of the challenges, I think, uh, for organizations is they don't necessarily have good visibility of when they're going to need to upgrade infrastructure, when they're going to need to expand infrastructure. You, know, you imagine a cloud environment or a private data center environment. Um, you want visibility well in advance of, you know, are you going to run out of capacity? When are you going to run out of capacity? When are you going to need to deploy more, um, uh, more infrastructure? And we help do that, right? We, uh, we help identify that. We can put certain measures in place to make sure that we, we can check some balances to make sure that we're giving the MSP or the enterprise or whoever's using the platform um, a forward advance notification and, not and give them the ability to identify um, where, they where they need to focus in building their business. Particularly useful for MSPs, of course, because uh, very often they are then providing that infrastructure and helping proactively plan their customers' business. Yeah, and I think this is a key, key part of what, you know, a progressive MSP should be looking to do because it opens up so many revenue opportunities. And instead of just reacting exactly right. to issues, you know, you're looking, you know, you're proactively helping customers. So I think, you know, performance monitoring and, is a and big you part can of tomorrow. Use metrics. That's right. And you can use it. We have amazing dashboards and, and, and reporting capabilities. And, yeah, you can use those dashboards. And, yeah, we have customers that use the dashboards in their customers' environment. But it means that, you know, you can show the data and you can say, look, we, we need you to provide, you know, so selling opportunity, as you said, we, you need to buy these additional uh, capacity or additional storage or whatever it might be, because look, here's the data, it's showing that you're going to need that in the next three to six months. So um, I think it, it helps an MSP, really, it helps them generate more revenue in the end, and it helps them create better customer, experience, better customer connections, better customer loyalty. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, in these interviews, Mark, I always like to put myself in the shoes of the MSPs who are listening, being a former MSP yeah. myself. I know one of the first questions they're going to ask of a product like Logic Monitor, a platform like Logic Monitor, is to do with security. So uh, yeah. MSPs have been in the news an awful lot lately, not all for positive reasons, you know, with ransom, uh, ransomware strikes. Uh, criminals are now actively targeting MSPs as the gatekeepers, uh, to, you know, to customer networks and everything. Security from the logic monitor perspective, what does that like look like? How seriously do you take security? Oh, very seriously. We have um, uh, we host our platforms in um, in you know top rated data centers in the world. Uh, we have a, a very stringent security process. We have a CISO that's in place, and you know and we document everything that we do. We have various accreditations in place that we need from a SaaS perspective to be able to provide our services and. And I would say, touch with you know, in my time here, um, I have not seen a single time that a customer has ever found any holes in our security processes or any any of our 
security around how we maintain the data or how we look after the, uh, the, the data of the customer. So generally speaking, I think it's a positive. I actually think um, I touched upon the integration with uh, the, the likes of the service now, ConnectWise or Autosk earlier. One thing that we see that we actually help MSPs from a security standpoint is because we have such a breadth of coverage in terms of what we can monitor, it means that being able to pull all of that device information into a SIMDB is critical because how do you protect your customers against, or if I'm an MSP, how do I protect my customers against um, you know, um, cyber crime? Well, the first start needs to be that I need to know everything that's in the network. I mean, if I don't have visibility and control of every configuration item, then I'm at risk because I can't, I can't, I, if I can't see it, I don't know what's going to happen with it. Um, so we definitely, in, in, you know, from a platform and company perspective, we're very strong from a security perspective, but we also enable MSPs to be able to be more security conscious and provide better security for their customers in terms of the visibility and the ability to monitor everything in their customers' environments. Yeah. And, and is there granular security? You know, you've got engineers, you've got uh, DevOps, loads of different people within a managed service provider business. So the granular security there? Absolutely, yeah. And, and it's a, as detailed as you'd expect it. Um, and we have customers who are major uh, Fortune 2000 enterprises that, you know, have tested the hell out of our uh, security capabilities and right down to uh, small businesses. And, of course, MSPs are looking after everything from SMB, mid-market, and enterprise. And, 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 you know, I'd say that, yeah, we, we've got a good, a good solution there around the, the security side. Yeah. And you touched upon something you said earlier about some clients have got sort of dashboards up in their clients' offices. Sorry, some MSPs have got dashboards up in their clients' offices. Yeah. Do, do you find any of your MSP clients sort of give end users access to have a look at this data as well? And they do, and, and they allow them to sort of see the, the, the data specific to their environment. They allow them to see exactly how it's performing, how it's trending. Uh, you know, much of, much of the interaction with the platform is through dashboards. I mean, the key part of it is setting up dashboards to be able to visualize data. Um, and, and, that, and it's very powerful for MSP to provide their customers access to that to allow them to see exactly what's happening. Yeah, cool. So we're coming to the end of our time. I know you're a busy man, got to uh, dash off and, yeah. uh, uh, and <laughs> grow this massive business that you're doing. Yeah. Before you go, what, what's, you know, you've been in this industry for a little while now. You're excited with what you're doing. What's some of the more interesting monitoring that you've seen out there that Logic Monitor customers are doing? Yeah, I, I think some of the key ones, and, and this is something that's, that's, ha that's really um, um, impacting MSPs for sure. Um, is cloud. And, and I'd say that, um, you know, MSPs, you know, generally are looking after so much complexity in their customers' environments, but you cannot deny that there is a shift to the cloud, there's a move to the cloud. Um, and I watched a great interview with the CEO of Amazon recently, and, that, and he, was on a, he was on the channel, and they were asking me, why is your business growing as rapidly as it is? And he said, well, because it's so much easier. You know, if you want to innovate, you want to build new applications, new services, you don't have to buy hardware, deploy hardware, set it up, et cetera. You just provision what you need in the cloud and you allow, um, and, and it allows you to innovate very quickly. It's much faster as a, and very often it's a lot more cost efficient. That's something that MSPs are embracing at pretty alarming rate. And I would say that um, that's a... If they're not embracing that, that's something they really need to very quickly because it's a it's a reality of what's happening in the market. Um, now, um, our ability to monitor those cloud environments is pretty unique and pretty important. So, monitoring an AWS environment, a Google cloud environment, Azure environment, um, and then also being able to, within the same platform and the same interface to allow you to monitor a traditional on-premise environment is quite key. Where it's very key for an MSP is that it allows them to help their customers on the journey to the cloud. They can identify performance of an environment that was perhaps on-premise and advise them and consult them when's the right time, which workloads they should move to the cloud, and they can help them on that journey. So I actually think that we're, that's a really key aspect. It's quite innovative, actually, in terms of how we're helping MSPs and help their customers on the cloud journey. 
Mm, you can definitely see that. Now, just before we close, I've got to say, you know, this is an interview I've been looking forward to doing because the podcast, yeah. the audio format is fairly evergreen. And I'm fairly confident yeah. that this interview is going to be listened to a year down the line, two years down the line, five years down the line, <laughs> because you've already got a monster business. But I think what Logic Monitor have got here is a product, is a platform that is just going to become a standard for MSPs going forward. I think this, you know, we're looking at the the sort of the future of the industry here. What what would you say is next for Logic Monitor? Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a number of uh, big strategic initiatives we're focused on, um, and particularly I'm focused on. Um, one is growing our channel business. So as well as there's, sort of, there's three aspects of, of, of our business from a channel perspective. One is we have very dedicated MSP programs. So we have MSP-focused programs around bringing MSPs onto, onto the platform, helping them grow. We have dedicated MSP account managers that effectively look after MSPs and help them understand how to not only use the platform and make sure they get the value out of it, but also enable them to sell it better and give them the right tools and training to help sell. So that's one aspect. The second part is is a reseller um, program that we've created, which is fairly new. And actually, this interestingly, it's sort of like it touches upon MSPs as well. You know. Many MSPs act as system integrators for their customers um, and they very often migrate them on the journey towards managed services. Um, but it's you know, a big part of the market which are reselling and providing consulting around deploying Logic Monitor, solu- Logic Monitor solution into the customer environment. So we've come up with a reseller program there. And the last area is alliances, which is really our strategic alliances with key technology vendors such as service now, we have a very strategic alliance with uh, AWS, Google, Microsoft, etc. So that's one big, one big focus is channel and continuing to really embrace channel and become more and more of a channel focused business. And within that, the biggest tenant of all is, is the MSPs. The, the second big one <clears throat> from where we're focusing is international expansion. So, um, and, that, and of course, that's near and dear to my heart, being a Brit who has always worked for American software companies and very often helped American software companies establish their presence in in Europe. Um, Yeah, Logic Monitor, it it was great great to know coming in, already had a really good presence, particularly in the UK and across Europe and in Asia Pacific, but we're rapidly growing that. So we have Daniela String, who is also an ex-autotasker, um, who is our managing director of Mio, and she's doing a fantastic job growing the business there, um, really helping our MSP clients um, grow significantly in the market. There, we're, we're bringing on new MSPs across Europe all the time, and we're helping them grow. So, European expansion is one big thing. We're going to start. We're moving into Germany um, later this year. We'll establish operations in Germany, um, and from there, we'll start to be very strategic about other. Um, markets that we'll go into. We'll service every market across Europe from London, but there's certain markets where we'll start to build a presence and Germany is one of them. And the other aspect is Asia Pacific. So as I mentioned at the, uh, or I mentioned earlier, we're growing all over the world. We have an office down in Sydney. Uh, we've put, there's about 15 people on the ground down there, a uh, lad called uh, Harry Guy down there, who, who I've worked with for many years, who's running our operation down there. And Harry is... Um, Harry, again, has a background in MSPs, knows the MSP market, is, in, is working closely with the channel down there. Um, we also have an office in Singapore. Uh, we have a technical support and uh, customer success office in, in Singapore, and we'll start to put a commercial focus there and build out our presence there. And the last area that we're looking at is Japan. So we're looking at how we might be able to expand in the Japanese market. We actually have one of the major one of the biggest IT service providers in the world that's out of Japan is actually a customer of Logic Monitor and uses us um, in all over the world, really, in Europe, uh, in, in Japan itself, across Asia Pac, as well as the US. And, um, and we're looking at how we might be able to expand our presence there and establish a, a presence in that market. It's a huge market, second largest IT market in the world and, and, um, and a very interesting market. And, and actually channel and sort of managed services is the route that we look, probably look to go in that market. So, yeah, so, so really big, two big focuses for me. One is channel um, and the other is um, international expansion. And then 
underlying that, of course, is just growing this team. I mean, we we have a really fantastic company, like a a very vibrant, um, you know, great culture, um, some fantastic people here in Austin and Santa Barbara and, and in every other lo- office location. And we're really focused. We've got a number of key tenants to how we run the business. One is one team. We're very focused on we are one team. Um, we are absolutely focused on and be, or being customer obsessed. So every person in the company is focused on, okay, how do we delight our customers? How do we provide value to the customer? How do we ensure that um, we continually provide the best possible service and the best possible products to our customers and ensure that they are getting the most value they can? Uh, so one thing I'd love you to come to next year is we established our first ever user conference, which was in June this year, 2019. And um, we've called it Level Up because we're really looking at how MSPs as well as enterprises can take a level up and um, and start to use monitoring to make their businesses perform better. Um, so you'll start to see us do more with that in building the community. So that's a big strategic focus for next year. So we have another Level Up conference here in Austin, uh, which we'll announce here shortly for 2020. We'll also do it. We'll also go on the road. We'll put one in London in the early part of next year, as well as in Sydney, potentially in Singapore. Um, and we'll have sort of like on the road versions of the Level Up conference, which is really about building community, embracing our customers, talking to our customers about not only what our plans are, but also embracing them and learning from them. And part of that is we've created, created a customer advisory board and we have an MSP specific version of that. So lots going on and I could probably carry on for another hour, but I'll take up too much of your day. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a fantastic company. I'd 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 suggest any managed service provider, if they're challenged with some of the things we've talked about in this podcast here, in terms of monitoring complex infrastructures, helping people move to the cloud, I think you should probably come and have a talk to us and speak to one of our talented sales representatives and you know start to learn about what they can do by embracing the Logic Monitor platform and and being part of that journey. I love it, Mark. I absolutely love it. Exciting times for you. And it's, uh, it's great to see yeah. another Brit doing fantastic things on the international stage. It's uh, really good to see, mate. That's great. Thanks. For, well, I really appreciate it, Richard. It's been lovely spending the time talking to you. Thanks. Really good speaking to you as well, mate. Thanks for your time today. If anybody wants to find out more info about Logic Monitor or get in touch with you directly, how would they find you online? So you can go to our website, uh, logimonitor.com is the most easiest way. Um, You can reach out to any of our offices um, and uh, you can can even go on and request a free trial and one of our sales representatives will get in touch and set you up with a guided free trial of the product. Fantastic. Well, as I said, Mark, I suspect this is going to be one of those interviews that people listen to for years to come because this is a product that's going to be the future of managed services. So thanks for your time today. Appreciate you uh, joining me all the way from Austin, Texas. And hopefully I'll get to see you this side of the pond uh, sometime soon. Excellent. Thanks, Richard. Hey folks, Richard here. Thanks for listening today. I know you've got a ton of options for who you listen to nowadays, so I really appreciate your support. Do you have any feedback on this episode? Ideas for future guests? Tweet me at Tublog using the hashtag TubTalk. I respond to every tweet and really appreciate your feedback. Hey team, this is Richard again. Just one more thing before you take off, and that is MSP Insights. Now, every Tuesday, I share my thoughts on the business of IT with you, the managed service community. Thousands of managed service providers already subscribe to MSP Insights. It's easy to sign up, easy to cancel. MSP Insights is basically a short email from me every Tuesday without fail with advice on growing your IT business, plus cool resources I found, discovered, or started exploring that week. It's kind of like my diary of cool things and often includes articles or books I've read, tools I've discovered and events I think you'd be interested in, often sent to me by my friends and Tub Talk podcast guests. So if that sounds fun, a short tiny bite of MSP goodness every Tuesday and you'd like to try it out, just go to go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. That's go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. Drop in your email and you'll get the very next one. Thanks for listening.